because this is going to be a lot of work and there's going to be no money and it's going to be a real lot of time. And I said, for this to be successful, this has got to be fun or I don't even want to mess around with it. Shalom and welcome to Crosstalk International. I'm Elijah Weiss. Normally, Crosstalk is hosted by either my grandfather or my dad. But for this series, we're changing things up a bit. You see, Crosstalk recently hit the major milestone of 50 years of ministry. This is very exciting to all of us, and it's caused me to reflect a little. I've seen my family operate this ministry my whole life, but I've never really fully understood everything that goes into it. Because of this, I'm trying to answer the question, what is the legacy of Crosstalk? and I'm taking you along with me. This is episode three of the series, and if you want to see episodes one and two, you can find them on our YouTube channel, at Crosstalk TV. In those episodes, we learned about how my grandfather, Dr. Randy Weiss, got saved and what his early days of ministry looked like. Today, we were picking up where we left off in the story. We're going to start connecting the dots of how we came to be a television ministry. What you're about to see is a roundtable discussion with a few of my family members as well as one-on-one -on -one discussions that I have with a few of them myself. We've got a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. So, so going back to the beginning stages of Crosstalk that we know today as the TV stations and the program that we send out, how did that start? It started as a radio program, the Crosstalk and Corner, okay? We were doing Crosstalk record, cross and Records, Crosstalk and Productions. Then we moved into the Crosstalk and Corner, which was a radio program. And, and in the, that's from the 70s into the early 80s. By the early 80s, the Crosstalk and Corner radio program was syndicated on a couple of hundred stations as part of the American Christian Countdown. Again, it was a music program, and our well, that's a whole bizarre story unto itself. But uh, I was a guest on the program, American Christian Countdown. They were playing some of my songs. And the disc jockey host of the program uh, was really nice to me. And I remember it was, he, he was a Chicago, big Chicago station rock jock uh, 100 years ago, came to faith. And uh, he was hosting this American Christian Countdown. I think that was the name of it. And it was headed up by a Jewish believer in upstate New York, actually. But the converted rock jock was the host. And somehow God made a way for us to be more than just a guest on the program. They liked the music, but they also liked what I had to say as far as ministry, you know, kind of tying a message to a song in a donut, kind of, you know, a little bit of talk, a little bit of music, a little bit of talk. And uh, I ended up down in uh, the Nashville area where the producer of the program would put everything together. Grammy and I and our little kids were going on vacation. This was a real vacation. It wasn't a ministry trip. We were going to take a week and go to spring break and go to the Gulf, I think. And it was the middle of winter in Indiana. And I told Grammy, and we were in the motorhome, I told Grammy I needed to stop in Nashville just to drop this thing off and talk to the producer, and then we were leaving. <laughs> and, uh, and the heater wasn't working. The furnace wasn't working in the camper at all. And so it was freezing in the camper. That was not a good thing. We've had that problem on several occasions, but uh, in any case, I was in the, the, the gentleman's little studio set up a lot longer than I should have been, and I knew I was gonna be in trouble, but he told me as a word from God, it was like a prophetic thing. 
you need to go see this man in this other place in New York, upstate New York. And it was like, no, no I, don't, I don't think so. You. And he felt that God would give me a word for him. And I was like, oh, this is so bad. And I went out to the camper and I had to tell Grammy about that vacation. I think God wants me to, instead of going to the Gulf, he wants me to go. And she was like, so gracious. And she didn't kill me or anything. And we just headed to upstate New York. And we got there and God did give me a word for this man. And it affected his life right there, right then. And uh, it was bizarre. It does, those things don't happen. That's not how we live our life. That's not something that's normal. I'm just a guy that likes to sit in the coffee shop and read the Bible. And But that day, God did something very particular. And when it was done, the next thing I knew, the cross-talking corner was a regular feature on this nationally syndicated American Christian countdown radio program, Cross-talking Corner. So, when 10 years later or whatever it was, and it wasn't 10 years, but it was some years later, maybe five years later, Crosstalk, the full Crosstalk TV show uh, launched on Lassie Broadcasting, World Harvest Television, after being on World Harvest's radio program, separate from that other stuff. <laughs> uh, my friend who had God had used to put all this together with Dr. Summerall, who I knew, I, he had actually, I got to know Dr. Summerall years earlier because uh, my friend had become the, it, the, the world director for Dr. Summerall's International Feed the Hungry ministry. And I was invited to come on that board and I served on that board for a number of years uh, for Dr. Summerall. Years later, then Crosstalk as a TV program came. My friend said, okay, you're doing this program. You have a weekly TV show. What are you going to call it? I said, oh, I, I don't know. He said, well, it should be, you know, the Randy Weiss something or other. And I said, oh, no, I can't do that. He said, yeah, yeah, you got it. It's got to be Randy Weiss something. Randy Weiss this or Randy Weiss that. I said, no, it, that would be a mistake. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, donors need to connect with the personality. And I said, well, we're not looking for donors and they don't need to connect with this personality. They need to connect with Jesus. I said, so we're going to talk about the cross. And if we get goofed up talking about other stuff, we got a real problem here. So let's not call it the Randy Weiss program or whatever. How about if we call it Crosstalk because we're going to be talking about the cross in one form or another. And so that's how it went from Crosstalking Records, Crosstalking Productions, Crosstalking Corner on radio, and then Crosstalk on TV. Very interesting. It seems like it's, um, it's had a journey. It's come, <laughs> come a long way to where we are now. It's been a journey. It doesn't seem like it though. Uh, and it, it doesn't really seem like it's been that long either. Uh, it's, honestly, it really just feels like we're finally getting started. I mean, it's like we're about to get serious now. For us, I mean, you're a little older, obviously, but for us, it started, you know, our, our involvement with this 50 years started in the late 70s and 80 and, you know, going through the the childhood with these types of trips and, you know, we weren't really considered PKs, but we were, were PKs and MKs and TKs and EKs and every kind of kid you can imagine because, you know, it depends on what day of the week it was. Um, 
And then in the 90s, Crosstalk started. You know, Crosstalk, the television program, not, not the radio or music, but the, the TV side of things. Maybe share, I know, I know obviously some of that genesis with Lester Summerall, and, but maybe share a little bit about that. We were in Indiana at that time. Actually, no, we were in Texas. We were in Texas. We just moved to Texas. Well, we had actually begun on television in the in the eighties with the Crosstalk and Corner, which was part of a TV series. I think it was called Cross Country, with Dr. Harry Yates and Joanne Cash Yates. Who we also met in the RV. Yes, yeah. we did one of those summer trips. <laughs> but you know, it's like who bumps into Johnny Cash's sister on. Yeah, <laughs> needing help in what, it was Alaska or Montana or wherever we were. Yeah. When God opened the door with our friends, Dr. Harry Yates and Joanne Cash Yates, we got together and they wanted to do a, uh, a, a TV series with country music artists who had come to faith, like Charlie Daniels. Charlie Daniels, after his conversion, his first television interview was on a TV series that Harry and Joanne and Billy Anderson Jr. and I produced. And my part of that program was da, 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 the crosstalk and corner. So I let them do everything with all the stuff. And then we, t we produced this five, six, seven minute segment for television, which was talking a little a little ministry, singing a song and talking a little ministry. It was a donut. And the Cross Talking Corner went on television on that TV series out of Nashville. Music was a primary uh, focus of our ministry from the very beginning. In fact, uh, when I came to faith and God called me to the ministry, I thought it was just a music ministry, and I, start, I started writing songs immediately. And uh, we were still in the Volkswagen traveling, and uh, this was in the 70s. This yeah. was in 73, and uh, I, I was just cranking songs out. And your mother, uh, I'd be driving down the road, and I would be asking her to write these things down. <laughs> <laughs> so I made her a crazy person and she took all my songs and tore them up <laughs> threw them in the garbage <laughs> I had to fish them out of the garbage and if you look in my songbook my, you'll see where it's taped you know the, from the copy machine you still see the tape <laughs> a lot of those songs could... mom what did he do <laughs> she can't remember he's made her crazy so many times. Well, it kind of came down to, you know, I'm not you your secretary. Really <laughs> no, no I, I really upset her because, I, number one, I was... I remember doing it. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah. uh, Harley Coulterman and I did a weekly radio broadcast, a world band radio broadcast for uh, Dr. Summerall's world band radio network. And uh, that was in the early is, 80s. So is that how things started with with Dr. Lester Summerall and the crosstalk relationship? Talk, help, help me understand or uh, refresh well, memories. Harley, uh, a wonderful man of God. We became very, very, very close friends. Uh, the Lord told Harley to go and serve Dr. Lester Summerall. And uh, he was a pastor. Harley had, he, Harley was a Christian leader and a, a really a wonderful man of God. He and his wife, very faithful. And when the Lord told him to go serve Dr. Summerall, it was basically just go and be an usher, do anything. And he went there, completely submitted, and he became an usher at the church. And he just humbled himself and did anything that 
he could to be of service. Harley had a, a real clear understanding of what it meant to submit to authority and to honor the Lord. And there was no pride. It wasn't stepping down from a teaching ministry or a pastoral ministry. It was God called him to serve. And that was the capacity that he was serving. And over time, the Lord honored that service and he ultimately became the world director for Dr. Summerhall's International Feed the Hungry Ministry and uh, a trusted uh, right-hand man to Dr. Summerall and Harley traveled all over the world um, doing really important things. And Harley and I, uh, as I say, we were doing a radio program together for quite a long time and we would tape them in batches out at the Ark um, and along the way, uh, as you may remember, we had become involved in a, uh, a video production business in Nashville, Tennessee with another very dear friend. And that business wasn't doing well. And at some point along the way, mom and I decided that, uh, we were, much more interested in the relationship with our friend than we were in the business. And we had invested in uh, some pretty expensive video production equipment. We did a lot of our music videos back in the 80s. Uh, Never seen a U-Haul on a hearse. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And it was that kind of equipment that everything was produced on. It was top of the heap stuff in its day. But at some point, uh, I felt we were just supposed to pack it up and stick it in a closet. And that's what we did. We packed it all up. We stuck it in a closet. I called Harley one day and I said, uh, hey, Harley, if you ever know anybody that needs any high-end professional video production equipment, um, we've, we've got this stuff that's in a closet. <laughs> and... Uh, some years went by and we ended up moving to Texas and uh, it was in a closet in Texas and I had uh, been going to Christ for the Nations Institute and in Dallas Baptist University and Tyndale Theological Seminary. I had kind of pulled myself out of public ministry and I felt I wanted to minister to the Lord and that was more important than ministering to people at that moment. And I just wanted to get to know the Lord better. And you may remember we were attending a church and they had a friend day at church. And the pastor got up in front of the congregation and said, you know, this next Sunday, we want you to invite an unsaved friend to church. And I realized my whole world had become so dramatically different. In Indiana, I worked with so many unsaved people and I was able to minister to the unsaved people at work. And here, when we came to Texas, everybody that I knew was involved in seminary pursuits or ministry and I came to recognize when the pastor asked that question, my whole life all of a sudden was revolving around people who were in ministry and they were, I didn't know anybody that wasn't saved. And it was a terrible feeling. It was a, it was a traumatic moment. And I remember just like, oh, what happened to my life? It was so weird. And I was disoriented. And as I say, I'd already graduated from uh, one of the schools and they were having an event where the 700 Club was hiring people. And they said that in the student hall that they were gonna be having these people from CBN there. And I was auditing a class when I saw this sign that they were gonna be there. And so I went there that evening 
And I walked in and there were lines of people and they had tables set up and they were all these people being interviewed. And I went over and I said, uh, I'd like to, uh, they were hiring phone counselors. I said, I would like to be able to talk on the phone to tell people about God's love. And they said, okay, fill out this application and we'll schedule an interview. And I said, uh, no, 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 I, I, I don't want to get a job. So I just want to talk to people about God on the phone. I thought that's what this was. They said, yeah, it is. Just fill out this application and uh, we'll set up an interview. And I took the piece of paper and I went to the next table and, and I said, I just want to talk on the phone to tell people about God's love. And the next person said, yeah, we'll fill out this application and we'll set up an interview. You want to come in for an interview? And, and I stopped and I said, well, I, I, I don't know. I'll have to ask my wife. <laughs> and so I took the application and I, I went home and I didn't have the nerve to, to tell her. And I, I sat there and it was like, she's not going to understand this. And, and I don't want a job. I just want to tell people about God's love because everybody I knew was saved. And it was just such a weird feeling. I just cried out to God and it was like, it was very weird. And it was just like, God, do whatever you want to do. Just break into my life. Do whatever you want to do. And I left that morning. I went over to do my Bible study. Finished my Bible study and then I went home and there was a fax on my machine when I got home. And it was from Harley. Now this was years later, years had passed. The fax was, if you, if you still have that equipment, uh, Dr. Summerall would like to trade that and give you a television program. And I, I just laid on the floor and cried. I said, God, I just wanted to talk on the phone to tell people about your love. And I called Harley and he said, if we still had it, Dr. Summerall wanted it and he would give us his TV program. It was like, okay, God, if that's how you're breaking in, okay. And so uh, I told Adrian, and, now, Dr. Summerall was in Indiana. I mean, we, we used, I used to go there with Harley and, you know, and he sent his contracts and we packed up and went back to Indiana for our normal Indiana trip for business. And we went to their studios and they had everything. They were gonna give us a, this TV program and they were gonna do everything. And and it was really weird. When we got there, Jim Chanel was walking in the building. And I hadn't seen Jim in a really long time. He was the radio guy in the early 80s that was the host of our first nationally syndicated radio program, the Crosstalking Corner on radio. And I hadn't seen Jim in probably 10 years. And as I'm walking in with mom, Jim's there and it's like, man, what are you doing here? And he says, well, I came to work for the Summerall's. I'm doing their radio station. I said, that's crazy. And what are you doing here? And I told him. And so we went and sat down in his office. And I told him, I said, I, I really don't want to do this. I don't, I don't like Christian television. <laughs> and I don't want to do this. And I said, Jim, I got an idea. I said, how about if you take the program? He said, what? I said, they gave me this contract and they're giving me a full year of production and satellite and broadcast and all this distribution. I said, but I don't want to do it. I said, how about if you take the program and you can do the, like you did on the radio thing and just give me a few minutes at the end for the crosstalking corner. And he said, man, that would be amazing. And, uh, and then he stopped and he kind of turned white and he says, Randy, 
God has called you to do this. And if you don't do what you're supposed to do and I help you not to do it, I will be helping you sin and I'm not going to do that. And it was like, whoa. And I realized that I was probably supposed to do this. So they had a meeting set up with their uh, production manager. And I told them, I said, okay, fine. They want to do this stuff. I mean, I had already given them the equipment. We'd carried it to them. And uh, I said, okay, we're going to do this. I said, but I, 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 I want to be successful. And the production manager, he was like, oh, well, you're going to be very successful and we're going to do this and that. I said, you don't even know what success means to me. And he said, well, okay, what does it mean? And I said, well, look, I, I really don't like Christian television. There's an awful lot of flaky things and things that are not accurate. And I just, I don't want to be a part of that. And I said, uh, there's three things. If, if we're going to do this, I want to be successful. There's three things that have to happen. He said, okay, what are the three things? I said, okay, the first thing, there's got to be broadcast excellence. And I don't even know what that means. He says, oh, we got that. This is going to be excellent. We top of the heap. Everything's wonderful. That's what we do. Okay, fine. I said, number two, this has got to be accurate. I said, and, and I'll take responsibility for that. I will research everything I do, everything I say, I will make sure I've researched it and it's accurate. And if I mess up and I put something out there that's not accurate, I will have to publicly repent of that and ex explain I made a mistake, this was wrong. And I said, and number three, I said, this is going to be a lot of work and there's going to be no money and it's going to be a real lot of time. And I said, for this to be successful, this has got to be fun or I don't even want to mess around with it because I know how hard this is going to be. And there's it. And he said, you know, that's amazing. You know, he says, you're going to be successful. And so now here, all these many years later, I can tell you, we are successful. It has been fun. I've just been so blessed to be able to work with my kids. And there's been a few things that I've had to edit out that I made mistakes on, that I knew I made mistakes on, and I had to edit it out before it went to air. And, uh, and I was right, there's no money in it and it's a ton of work. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're out of time for this episode. Luckily, our next episode will pick up right where this one ended. Be sure to follow us on all the major social media platforms with the handle at Crosstalk TV so you don't miss any future episodes. I think you will find through this series that it is important to follow God's lead wherever he takes you. He has always provided for us and he will for you too. Until next time, shalom and God bless.